All reprocessing issues uh, have been a concern in our top 10 list for quite a few years. In fact, seven out of the nine years we've published the top 10 list, endoscopy or um, issues related to reprocessing have been in that top 10 list. So it's an area that's perennially there. Uh, and if you, you'll see soon why it gets so much attention. I think what's helpful is if you understand a little bit about the life cycle of a reusable medical device. Oh, the file uh, found, so I'll put it right now. Yeah, <laughs> glitch in my machine. Anyway, uh, first use course is on the patient. It's then cleaned, disinfected, and sterilized, and stored, and then it repeats that cycle. And for some medical devices, that cycle might be repeated once a week, maybe once every couple weeks. For scopes, it's typically multiple times in a day. So uh, you can imagine that this is going on, these scopes are being used very actively. And when you ask someone, the typical person in healthcare, which step in this process is probably most important in preventing infection, they're gonna point to disinfection and sterilization, which is justifiable. That's where you're killing things that are left behind on the scope and hopefully it's safe then for the next patient. But what's really interesting is that the cleaning step is often overlooked. And to us, that's important because cleaning, it turns out, if it's not done properly, um, means you can't ensure that you can actually effectively disinfect or sterilize a device. And cleaning of endoscopes is a particularly challenging task. If I can have you step over here for a minute, I'll show you a little bit about why that is the case. This is a colonoscope. It's a, one of the more basic types of uh, flexible endoscopes. And you know, on the surface, it looks pretty easy to clean. You've got a smooth surface that can be wiped down. Um, there's not much to it. I mean, this part from here to the end is the part that's used in the body. The rest of this goes outside the body, is connected to another device, which produces a light source and also a camera. Um, the controls are up here for maneuvering the tip of the scope, and there are ports, which I'll be talking about in a second. So if you were to look inside of a scope, what you would see, if you peeled back the skin on this, is that there are a multitude of these components that are either tubes or cables that allow you to manipulate the tip of the, of the scope. It has to be flexible, it has to be very maneuverable because it's going through passages in the body that are clearly not straight. So the flexibility and the maneuverability of that makes it easier. In addition, there are channels, um, an air channel, a water channel in this case, and a biopsy channel. These are tubes that run the entire length of what we call the insertion tube, this part of it. And they come out here in the ports where uh, instruments can be inserted or you can attach equipment to pump fluid or in or out of the, uh, the scope. In addition, there are the cables I mentioned. There are fiber optic light bundles that are used to bring light to the tip of the scope so the uh, physician can see where they're going. And then there's a camera and there are cables associated with that that go back through the whole uh, assembly as well. So that's the colonoscope. Now, it's been said that the uh, duodenoscope, which is over here and is the topic that many of us heard about last year with all the CRE infections, this is considered one of the most challenging scopes to clean. And again, it superficially looks similar to a colonoscope, but the big difference is in the tip of this scope. It has a feature called an elevator, which is used to redirect a, a biopsy forcep that is pushed through one of the channels here. And by doing that, the physician is able to manipulate the tip of this. Can, can you see that moving? Um, okay. That elevator allows the physician to redirect the uh, catheter or the forceps up into the bile duct where they, they do procedures on patients. Um, this scope also can be manipulated in very much the same way as a colonoscope. But the tip of this, with all these components, 
you look closely, you can see there are a lot of surfaces in there yeah. that are pretty challenging to get to. Yeah. And when a uh, technician is doing the reprocessing, they're typically using a brush like this that's threaded through each of these channels to clean out any crud that gets left behind after it's used on the patient. So this is being done by hand? It's being done by hand. This is a very good point. It's a manual process. So you can imagine there's quite a bit of variability from one person to the next, depending upon how much pressure the person is under to get it done. There can be quite a bit of variability. Um, I mentioned the tip of this and the elevator. This elevator feature has been implicated as, as, as a proximate cause of the CRE infections because of the complexity of this, this area. Getting in here with a brush and trying to extract blood and other debris, including bacteria, is really, really difficult to do. So one of the things that I think has come out from this uh, publication of all these stories on the CRE infections is the fact that we're not doing a great job in reprocessing scopes. In fact, there are people that speculate the CRE infections are in fact just the tip of the iceberg. There might be other infections that are happening more routinely, but because they're less serious, they're not as difficult to treat, and less, they're, they're less rare types of infections, they tend to well, longer not see period and longer latency. And there's they so tend, much bad stuff in the hospital anyway. It would be hard right, to figure hard out to where it came from. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly the problem. So the consequences with CRE it was very easy to trace back because it is such an unusual bug, and we have good ways of identifying it genetically. We can now determine whether or not it came directly from the scope, and that has been a, a huge, um, you know, I think, a huge factor in determining that the scopes were contributing. So now people are saying, well, you know, are we doing a good enough job of reprocessing? There are people that are questioning whether or not the high-level disinfection of scopes is satisfactory or do you have to sterilize. But the fact still is, if you don't do a good job of cleaning in the first place, you can't be sure that either of those processes is going to be effective at removing uh, viable bacteria. So we're learning more and more about this going forward. and. I think hospitals now are kind of struggling with what is the right answer. 